It's Linda McPhee's workshop. Here's Linda. And hopefully when you hear that music, that gets you in a creative mode and that gets you in a sewing mode and that gets you sit down and have fun time because my guest with me is going to give me lots of fun. I know it's Ron Collins. It's good to have you back, Ron. Well, thank you, Linda. It's always a treat. Good, good, good. And I love it when you come because you always are so impeccably dressed. Well, I mean, thank you. you can't buy stuff that fits and looks like that. And isn't that why you sew? Yes, definitely. It is. It's yeah. why I sew because you just can't. Maybe there's a reason mm. that you can't buy these kind of things. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we're... One of a kind. Yeah, it is. We love it, don't we? I think so. Yeah. How many, just, just let me ask before we begin, how many gar outfits would you have? I would have about 130 garments <laughs> in my closet, <laughs> and I brought some here today. <laughs> but we think men don't, you know, don't have uh, as many because I mean, pets. Uh, what can you do with? But uh, you know, I mean, we women, I mean, we're a bit peacockish, <laughs> and I mean, we have so many kinds of things. But you know, you are limited in yes, colors, and yes, but I you am. Can still but I, you know, when you're when you're restricted like that, it. it it's more challenging. Oh, it yeah. is. Yeah. And you get you become more creative. Yes, yeah. I'm sure that's true. Although we still don't want our men wearing pink and blue. Well, yeah. they, yes, they do. They do. Okay. They do. All right. And green. And green. <laughs> that's true. So what are you going to show today? Because you are the master of so many. Well, this here is a technique that I learned about 12 years ago, and it's, it's doing well pockets. Mm -hmm. When it comes to men's garments, there's not too many garments you can put together without, without a putting welt a welt pocket. Yes. And at one time, I would avoid any patterns that had welt pockets, but a good friend of mine, Sherry Ellis, taught me this. Uh -huh. And I've been using it ever since. I revised it a bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it has been the best technique. Okay, I think so often, and on this program, I'm always saying, "Hey, let's do things quick and easy, and all this kind of stuff." But I mean, you can do quick and easy and mm -hmm. tailored. Yeah, that's so, right. So I mean, that's that's, that's really right. the yeah. the difference of what we're talking yeah. about here. Yeah. So this would go on a jacket like yours. Jacket on the back of pants. Uh, um, for double welt pocket, yeah. single welt pocket, a tailored jacket, double okay. welt pocket, with or without the flap. Okay, okay. Same technique. Sure, sure. Uh, I revised this technique to a smaller version to do a bound buttonhole okay, as well. Okay, you've got me, you've got me hooked. Okay, let's, let's see. Let's All right, get my glasses on. Now, what I use here is a very lightweight, non-woven, uh, non-fusible interface. Okay. And I've actually would take that and draw the finished size of my welt pocket on okay. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which From, is what this is. This exactly. Is draw, okay. this, now, this here is going to be a big welt pocket. This is about two inches by six inches, but you can make these any size. Size, okay. any shape. Okay. Oh, you've got me hooked. Tri yes. I can see that on a few of your jackets. Yes, you window. could. Oh. Yes. <laughs> because pockets are important. That's right. I mean, there's lots of sewers out there that said, "Oh, I don't need pockets." No, you and do. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> yes. Okay. Then you take you take that lightweight interfacing and you sew it onto the right side of the garment. Okay. And this piece of fabric here is acting like my garment. Yes, okay. Sew it on. Do not start in a stress corner. No, which is, that's a good or point. Or a stress point, which start. is a corner. Sure. So anywhere else, but yep, yep. from there you're going to cut open your welt by slashing through the center and stopping about one inch from the end. Okay. If it is a smaller pocket, Linda, stop about three-eighths from the end sure. and Form these little triangles. I think the other thing that always scares sewers is that you want to get right into that corner. That's too. right. I mean, not not almost. You want to get to it, but not through it. That's true. Okay. Okay. Good. You've done this before. Yes, okay. That's good. Then we're going to take this lightweight interfacing and we're going to press it to the wrong side of the garment. From there, you're creating a window. A nice, beautiful so, window. And so nice here's your back side. Corners. And not bulk. I mean, That's right. You've nice left. and flat. Yep. yep. I see that you've interfaced this to begin with. Is this, if you had a fabric that was not as firm as you wanted, mm -hmm. you could interface Definitely. that whole place where you're going to put on, your pocket? On my tailored jackets, I fuse interfacing to the entire front. So that it's so nice and that's right. crisp. So okay, the, now that we've got the hole then, what do we the do? The little trick here is the two pieces of fabric that I have cut for my welt right. will not only form my welts, but it'll form my pocket I lining as well. I can see by the size of this. I like the So the this. longer you cut this, the deeper your pocket is going to be. I like that. Okay. So, and that cuts out a lot of bulk because you're not sewing lining to welts. Yes. Everything yes. is yeah. Every time you sew a piece to another piece, you've got a little ridge there. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to machine base those two pieces of fabric right sides together. Okay. From there, you're going to take and you're going to press your welts open like a book. Okay. 
Okay. This now is that's, now right side of your fabric. That's right. Mm -hmm. And this is a basting. That eventually will come out. Okay. That's going to release your two welts. Okay. Okay. Then on the back of your garment, I take a little bit of fusible, um, what do they call fusible it? Fusible web well, stuff. Yeah, yeah. fusible yeah. web. Yeah. And I fuse that on, and I fuse the garment to my welt. Oh, this is nice. And yeah. this is when you decide whether you want to make a double welt, if you want to make a single welt, or if you, you love this, if you want to <laughs> get a little crooked. crazy, yeah. you know, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And you'd actually fuse your garment to your welt. Okay. So that, okay. From there, you can just stitch, machine stitch all the way around. But yeah. if you don't want any visible edge stitching like you find on a tailor jacket, flip the garment back. It, that exposed stitching yeah, line, yeah. you along. sew all the way around your pocket. Yeah, yeah. And what that does, it actually takes the welts and now they're sewn yes, to the garment. Yes, without any top stitching. Without Lovely. any top stitching. Lovely. Then you can release Take your basting out, and you have your double welt. I can see what's coming mm -hmm. here. And we then, then we're going to finish up the back of the pocket. What I do here is you'll notice that one is longer yes. and one is shorter. That's fine. Don't cut the longer one to make it shorter. What I do is I take the shortest one and the longer one, and I sew, sew them together. together right sides. Yeah. Press the seam open. Mm -hmm. Now you don't have a seam at the bottom of your for pocket. Bulk again, yeah. and, right. and for stress as well. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And another little pointer here, don't bring this top pocket Too right tight. down. Okay. I bring it up about a half inch, and I press it. So there's a little slack. And I actually sew all these layers together. Okay. If you bring this all the way down, Eventually, over time, that okay. top welt will want to flip out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good point. If you want to put in a pocket flap, which I've done here. Yes, which no, I assume seems to have. Yeah. No additional work. Okay. Except for making the pocket pocket flap. flap. So what we're going to do? We're going to go back a few steps. Okay. Just we've just completed sewing around our pocket. Okay. We open our basting to mm -hmm. open our welt. Mm -hmm. Take your pocket flap. Put it in between. You're going to love this, Linda. Okay. You're going to put it in between your two welts. Yeah. Oh, Flip your yeah. garment over yeah, and yeah. just continue to sew. And when you sew through all these layers up here, it's what are you catch, doing? You're catching, you're catching that pocket flap. Lovely, lovely, and you lovely. And that's Nothing. what it looks like. That you is can wear it with the pocket flap out, out or, or you can tuck it in. Okay. See how nice that and flat? Is, that is smashing. Mm -hmm. That is very, very nice. Very lovely. And another thing I've done here is I've taken the same technique but made it smaller, looking like a bound buttonhole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then on the facing prior to, you know, what so I So on the bound buttonhole, this is, let's go back. You don't mm -hmm. need all this long stuff hanging That's out. That's right. So you just chop all that off. That's right. Yeah. You just get rid of it. Yeah. So you do the bound buttonhole on the, on the front mm -hmm. and you do the machine on the back. And you just you stitch them together. in the ditch or fuse them together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, and nice. And it gives you a very nice look. That is nice. And I have other versions so here. So, do what? Well, this one. I've actually put a zipper in between the two welts prior to. Oh, so there is a welt and a zipper. Yeah, that's right. But, I mean, this is basically the beginning of uh, a zippered pocket, mm -hmm. isn't it? That's oh, yeah. When you create the hole, you just put your zipper right. inside there yeah. and, and go around. Okay, so here is the one. With uh, machine. A machine, machine button, yeah, button hole. And machine stitching machine all around stitching here. Machine stitching around yeah. as well, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the button hole through that, mm -hmm. yeah. Make sure if you decide to do a button, Linda, yes. you do it before the, you sew up the back of the pocket. Because see, if I finish the back of my pocket and I did a machine button <laughs> hole through I learned from my mistakes. <laughs> I gotta submit that. <laughs> that is awfully sad to do because this is all yeah. looking so good, and you do something goofy like yes. that. So yeah, that's not not good, and that's why people give up sewing. But just get your wits about you, and just keep mm -hmm. you know. It, it, that's right. Just think it through. I always like to think the whole project through as I'm going, and mm -hmm. why am I doing this? And and I think that's uh -huh. important. So yeah. Okay, so this, uh, the only one that I want to sort of see is is this one. The triangular. Yes. Belt. So you just started with a. You drew a triangle instead right. of... 
a rectangle. Instead of a rectangle. Yeah. Tap. I think I can yeah. handle that. So that. I, I want to see that on one of your next jackets. Yes, yes. So when I did this, at, when you do this at the back, what happens to this? Well, this it? here, you can actually use this as a bound buttonhole. What okay. you want to do here is bring this down, like so. Don't bring it on an no, angle. No, no, Bring no. it down. Finish up your pocket. I could have cut these longer. Yeah, to or we can still just sew that. Sew that yeah, all yeah, together yeah. that way. And you've you got spent. just a fine-looking mm -hmm. pocket. So I think that is quite yeah, exciting. Okay. That's, that's that's a, nice a good one. one. Okay, I think that's good, Rod. I, I think I don't want to confuse. This is once we've got this one technique, we've got many several, many ways to use it. Several ways. Yeah, yes. yeah. This being just lovely, so thank that's you. just just lovely. Thank so thank you so much. We're going to have you back again. And, oh, wonderful! You, know, you thank always you. bring such great ideas. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome, Linda. Okay, and don't you go away because we've got more stuff coming up. I'm so delighted when I go get the mail and I've got some fan letters or some letters telling me, from you telling me what you've done. And this one, I think is a great one, is from Karen Grunt in Wawa. And it says, thanks to you, I can create these wonderfully warm and beautiful parkas. Each, each is a one of a kind. My granddaughter's parka will end up in her hope chest for her kids. And isn't that a cute picture? Thank you, Karen, and I hope, I hope others of you will send me pictures and ideas of what you've done that have been inspired by the show. Speaking of being inspired, I've got my next guest, and you have done some wonderful things. Donna Harish, um, you're a sewer from way back, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Correct. Yes. So those little parkas, do they look familiar? Have oh, you done, they do. You've done lots of sewing. I've, I've taken McPhee workshops. Oh, have you? Okay. Yes. That's, that's wonderful. Okay. Uh, but you're now into kind of quilts and art kind of things like Contemporary that? Contemporary art quilts. Yes. This one behind me, shall we look at this one? Because okay. this is very different and very outstanding. This started out with yardage from my niece's dress that she had made 11 years ago. Leftover yardage. It, leftover Actually, yardage. it could be the dress even, couldn't it? If you... Yes, I you suppose could it could. Use the actual dress, mm -hmm. but sure. Yep. And this is your niece. Yes, that was her, her body. So, okay. Uh, this is not her hair. No, it? that <laughs> okay. was a, a fall that I had in 1970. Okay. Okay. And the fabric on the background is um, upholstery fabric. Right. With moiré for the body. Wonderful, good, good base. Okay. So, and just basically, then you have zigzagged around that and appliqued. But what an unusual piece. Mm -hmm. You've got some more unusual ones here as well. Yes, so, they do. What about this? This here is a relatively easy piece. Quite often we purchase fabrics and we're not sure what exactly to do with them. It's um, a little much in a whole piece. It is. But separated out. It so, is. what I've done is I've cut out individual um, bits sure. and pieces of it sure. and fused it onto this background. Uh -huh. And done um, some stitching and did the stitching. And more graves. Yeah. And, and the background was from a drapery piece. Um, the Sure. Grapes were from a trip sure. to the Okanagan. <laughs> okay, so you, you are a collector, I can see. Yes, you are a collector. I, I accumulate things. This is a whole hodgepodge of what? Now we've got we've got fish. On, no, those sequined, are, sequined appliques, appliques that, that you purchase. Yeah, those are fish. quite often used for um, garments, costumes, and right, things like course, that. Yeah, yeah. And I decided that you know some of these things are so interesting and, yeah. and beautiful. But you say this is kind of like a memory thing. This is it this is, is not really yes. a. This so there are some necklaces and um, orphaned earrings and things like that yeah, that yeah. my grandmother had or, you know, different family but members. Take and on a whole things new life. that you see when you're shopping at vintage shops sure. and think, gee, I remember having that. So, so you buy it and then you have to... And rather than having it in drawers, I've started putting it onto the walls. Sure, yes. sure. Okay, you've got one here. Yes, and this you've... here is with stitching and with the snippets and things like that. Okay. And the You've painted this fabric to begin with. Yes, the fabric that's didn't correct. Have that. And the a butterfly, if we can call it that, sure. is actually an old shoe clip. Okay. So okay. Uh, sometimes when you've lost the other pair or the yes. match, oh, yes. it's a good thing to use it. I think you and I get along well. I cannot throw away things. That's no. one of my problems. And if you don't move, it's okay. But if you start to move, like oh, move houses, sure. then it's then difficult. You have to hit crunch time. So you've got a piece here set up, and you've just pinned it into a board, right, to sort of hold it tight. Mm -hmm. And this and is and this is painted. Okay. And then when I'm trying to design these different things, I look for unusual items. This is some 
This is great looking uh, stuff. I, I like yeah. this. This is uh, so. this could be underwater. This could be grasses. Mm -hmm. This could be anything. And we could put more on there or whatever. Sure. We would couch that How would down. You, okay, you would use then your free motion foot. The open yeah. toe. Yeah. And, so and quite often with the um, clear or smoked thread Okay. with yeah. that. So you wouldn't see it. And to make things more interesting, I'm finding that if I fold this over and then stitch it on one side, you've got double... The Double thickness, whammy, yeah. And you've got more of that 3D effect. Sure, sure. So, so you want this to be sticking out. You don't want it to be you all, would. all mm -hmm. flat. Okay. Yes. And uh, when you're doing a pictorial like this, sometimes we might use a fusible web. Okay. And so then that would hold something. What else would yes. you put on top of that? I might go ahead and use some of these snippets. Oh these dear, this could be bits that, of fabric. This could be from your serger bag, yes. or this could be from your sewing. This could be and off the sweeping floor. the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and sprinkle that on, and then with if one of those the Teflon sheet, sheet yes, yes. And, then and place it over top. Then yeah. you would, and of course you'd spend a little bit of time working on that. Okay. Uh, some of the flowers, take some more. I try to do these in color groups and such. So you could scatter those and, and or put those them underneath. Buds and flowers and things like right. that. Yeah, and then you've got all of these guys, or, or right. Right, and, and you this could use looks threads like, if you wanted to yeah. and cut those up as well. This could be anybody's well. thread box. Yes. So you could kind of play around with this if you wanted, mm -hmm. I guess. That's a lot. Create but whatever. Yeah. yeah. And what about these jewelry pieces? Well, we can place them wherever we feel comfortable, wherever they look good. Okay, so, so try it and see. Placing them. They could be the big flowers. Could be something down here with some more shrubbery and such. Right. You might want to have a focal point, and sometimes butterflies are really nice yes, items yes, too. Yes, yes, yes. So how would you stick those? Would you glue them down then? Is that what you'd do? Or, or hand them stitch them. Okay. You know, we're out of time. So thank you so much for joining us. But thank don't you. you go away, because we've got a really exciting element coming up. Well, that Donna is a wild woman, and she does some crazy things, but I have another pretty wild woman with me today. It's Carol Todd, and I love it when you come, Carol, because you come with such a variety. You travel all the time, I'm, don't you? I'm lucky. I'm real. You've heard this before. Yes. I'm very, very lucky. I get to travel and meet ladies that sew every day and create yes. every night, and, yes. and they share their ideas with me, and some of them even share their creativity and uh, let me yeah. use things for shows like this, so yeah. I'm very, very lucky. I mean, sometimes we don't actually have to do it ourselves when we teach or when we're with people. If they've done it, it seems like... Like mm -hmm. we've done it. And yeah, it's, it's part sort of the sharing, it's, and it grows. It is, yes, it does. One person starts with one something, and then you add to it, and you add to it. It, it does. Really grows. It does. It does. And so what have you brought? Well, Tell the traveling some. gives me some time to think about, you know, how do you go about this planning, and that's where some of my ideas come to. Sure. Well, also while I'm traveling. Sure. But I kind of think in terms of a one, two, and three. Step one, step two, step three. Step okay. one is you got to figure out what you want to make, right? Okay. Think out uh, and think outside the box. That's yeah. a couple of things we're going to yeah. look like. Are look at are outside the box, or they might even be a box. That's maybe. true. Well, okay, I like that. And then you need to plan what medium you're going to do it. On. Okay. Uh, is it going to be on fabric, or is it going to be on one of those other things that we can use? Yes. And yes. then gather the right tools because you put in all this this effort so far, and you're going to be putting even more time in joy, but also time. Mm -hmm. Let's have the right tools to do it. So that's sure. the hoops and the stabilizers and the threads and the a quality and I think machine. That's the joy of sewing these days. People are just getting back into it. They haven't sort of kept up, and there's so much. I mean, yeah. I don't want to scare them, but whatever you need, it's there. It's yes. been invented. But we there's more to. help available for you now, too. True. There's more there to learn, but there's more stores and dealerships out there Certainly. with unbelievable amounts of knowledge and yes. really want and to share. And willing to yeah. take, do classes and all that. Okay, okay let's, let's start. I love those, those bags. Those gift bags. So this, these are bags here, but these could also be gift cards. They could be all sorts of things. I Just would like it. In the paper mode, whatever card, paper, yeah. paper is going to be. Yeah. Well, how do we embroider on paper? And both of those on the front are embroidered on handmade paper, and then the paper is affixed to the bag. So okay. we're taking a regular embroidery from our embroidery machine. But you know what? You could actually be sitting at the sewing machine with your feed dogs up, normal sewing, 
and uh, putting on some decorative stitches and uh, doing some creativity okay. there with the with the uh, handmade. Like, we'll get to back to that. And we'll talk it? later about yeah. the okay. needles and the um, stabilizer. The, the dolls. Dolls. Dolls are so much fun, and yeah. there's so many people doing all different kinds of them. And well, I there's mean, no real right or wrong to a doll, oh, is there? I mean, no, no. that's the joy. Is absolutely yeah. not. You look at all the different cultures. There's all sorts of different yeah. dolls out yeah. there, big, small, and all sorts of different um, yeah. Yeah. shapes to so, them. Yeah. And I meet lots of ladies that want to get into doing it, but they see it as big and, and difficult to do. Mm -hmm. It's not. No, no. But Husqvarna Viking has come up with kits that make it a lot easier. For example, this Croatian doll here, this lovely, lovely little doll. The fabric and the whole business? Can be made in a day. The whole thing is in a kit. Okay. The designs for stitching it, the fabric, the instructions. You're actually stitching it in the hoop, and you're uh, doing the embroidery in the hoop and, and the stitching in the hoop. Then you're stuffing it and uh, putting it together. Okay. And it I, can actually I be done in a day. I think kits are such a good way to go because you get everything you need. You don't have to be tramping around. That's half the reason why people didn't yeah. complete garments or, or fa projects because they couldn't find whatever they needed. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's skip across. I love your umbrella. Yes, okay. This is thinking outside the box, <laughs> yes. isn't it? Yes, this it is. is thinking of, okay, I'd like to make one. Now, how do I go about doing it? Yeah. So did you take well, one apart? Well, in this one is taking one apart, taking an old one apart, and then starting from scratch using, a obviously, a vinyl on top, yeah. and yeah. then there is a lining underneath. On the sections here, we just stitched uh, in the embroidery unit. You hooped uh, it? Hooped it, yeah, yeah. stitched it in the embroidery unit. Could be done by sewing machine. Okay. Use a ballpoint yeah. needle yeah, so that yeah. you don't damage the vinyl. All right, I'll get that one out of there. But then you did the boots. I love that. I didn't do it. Um, a friend Somebody did. Somebody did. It, <laughs> yeah. it, it, they are lovely. So and again, embroidering on fabric and then putting it on the top of the boots. The hat, the jacket is done very, very well and in good detail. Yeah. A lot of sewing machine techniques there. A roller foot is wonderful to have when you're sewing on vinyl mm -hmm. so that your foot doesn't stick to it. A roller foot's got four little tires. I think of it as a little car rolling zoom, along. Zoom, zoom. And, yeah, yeah, it goes yeah, right yeah. along yeah. on the vinyl. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Uh, okay, let's get back to this paper business paper. because you said you could you can embroider on anything. Is that what you're saying now? Pretty well, I don't want to say anything for sure because you somebody been there, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But we're getting close to anything. Yeah, okay. This is handmade paper. It comes okay. in all different colors, textures, and, yeah. and weights, yeah. right? Yeah. You could do it on a square like that. You could tear up a piece and sure, put sure. it on. Yeah. Then so we're going to hoop some um, uh, some stabilizer, and in this case, we're going to use a spray to spray it, uh, fix it down. So and I'm going to go to my I... spray collection here, and there's a 202, which is a lighter spray. We could use 505, mm -hmm. or we could use 202. Mm -hmm. And just spray down there. Okay, then put, put this the on, top. on top. Okay, and then that goes into Take it hoop. to our embroidery machine and stitch on it. Okay, wonderful. Okay. And then you'll, this all tears away afterwards. Uh, cuts away. Cuts this away. is soft okay. and sheer. Okay. This okay. stabilizer is actually soft and okay. sheer. Mm -hmm. You could use a uh, lightweight uh, tear away. You could also use a very lightweight cut away. It depends on what you're so doing. We're gonna, I have to see this. Okay. This is on wood. This is on balsa wood, what's called balsa wood. And this is actually a box that opens opens up. And just let me give you a quick idea yeah. of how we did it. Yeah. Again, we're hooping something. Uh, in see. this case, yeah. we put stabilizer in that's called sticky stabilizer. I scored the top piece of paper, and tear it there. off. This is like fly paper. So I can stick that down on that there. goes down. Square it up, I would think. Probably is a good idea. Or you could square it after you've sewn That's it. true, that's true. Take yeah. it yeah. to your embroidery machine and stitch it out. Okay. What, what's this business? This, this member I mentioned hoop tools. About. Well, tools are something we need in order to do a lot of the things. We yeah. need the right tool. Yeah, I thought this, this was This goes amazing on forever. Amazing when I saw this. Absolutely gorgeous Afghan. Yeah. And it goes so on this forever. Or this could be the bottom edge of a wedding gown going on forever. Yes. Well, how are yeah. we going to do that without unbelievable amounts of hooping something? Who's finally a Viking has come up with what's called the endless the endless hoop. So we're going to pretend. We're living yeah. in the land of pretend right now. We finished stitching this part of the embroidery. We're going to declamp it or unclamp it pull the fabric up to specific points that the Husqvarna Viking design marks for you, clamp it down again, put keep it back going, in the machine, keep, stitch just it again, keep on, trucking. keep on pulling it. You could even leave the machine at midnight if you're going to quit sewing <laughs> that early, that means. And That's then turn true. back to the so next morning. So people get started by then. That's right. Okay, Carol, you have taken us There's completely. More? Is there more? Oh, we'll have to do it another day. We'll have to do it another okay. day. Okay. Thank you so much. As this Thanks has just been having. great fun. There's, there's no end of possibilities, the endless hoop no. for, for one. No. We've got to go. We're out of time. So thanks so much for joining us, and we want to see you next time, because next time, who knows, we'll have Carol Banger. We'll have all kinds of exciting guests. So join us. To receive the companion book for this series, send 1998 to the address on your screen or call 1-888-McPhee.